What is the key to finishing easy balls in tennis? And how can you stop your putaway shots from sailing out or dropping straight into the net? By the end of today's video, you're gonna learn how to recognize, prepare, and crush one of the most powerful, deeply satisfying, and exciting shots in the modern game. The first step to crushing the short ball is identifying and recognizing early the ball will be short. Seeing the short ball early will allow you to move into the court faster, which will take away time from your opponent, allow you to get into great net position easier, and give you the greatest chances of being able to run around your backhand and crush the ball on your forehand side. The key is to have a positive and aggressive state of mind. If you're hesitant to attack the net, you'll be late to read the ball. But by reading your opponent and the ball, you can quickly tell which balls are you gonna be able to come in and approach off of. Top players like Nadal and Federer are able to sense their opponent's shot and move forward inside the baseline before they even hit the ball. And with the same calculated yet aggressive mindset, you're gonna be able to smell blood in the water and sense your opponent's short ball before they even make contact. This is gonna give you a huge advantage in your matches. So. As you land your split step, intensely concentrate as your opponent makes contact to make an early judgment as to its trajectory and speed. To develop this skill best, you can work with a coach alternating short and deep ball feeds. Take this one step further by trying to identify which short balls you can run around your backhand side. Now that you've successfully identified the short ball, we're gonna cover preparation. You're probably aware of the three basic stances in tennis, neutral, semi-open, and open stance. But if you look at the pros, they're often doing way more than these basic footwork stances. With over 15 years of researching and analyzing pro footwork patterns, coach David Bailey has pioneered the concept of the contact move. The contact move explains the dynamic footwork variations and how top players set up, move during and through contact, and how they move after contact to establish balance and set the stage for recovery. The best contact move for you to crush those short high balls is called the forward transfer, also known as the dip drive forehand. Because this move is executed in a semi-open stance, it is more optimal to be hit on the forehand side, but it can also be hit on the backhand side as well. The dip drive is hit with a variety of out steps, which are the steps you use to position to the ball. This crucial ability to understand your body's position relative to the ball is what Rick Macy calls probing. How you should move to the ball depends on how far the, the ball will land away from you as you land your split step. If there's a big distance between you and the ball, your initial steps are gonna be much larger. Whereas if you anticipate the short ball by successfully split stepping into the court before your opponent makes contact, you're only gonna need to take a few shuffle steps to get into the right position. Now, one of the most common mistakes at this phase of the shot is to not move your feet aggressively and proactively. If you see the ball coming slow, don't make the mistake of thinking you have a lot of time. Urgency is the key to greatness. To execute this shot, you will need to aggressively move your feet into the right position and generate massive power by driving your body through the ball. One of the most important concepts in this video that you should understand is that on slower, shorter balls, the majority of power you generate needs to come from your body. If you hit the ball feeling jammed, rushed, or tense, then you need to improve your ability to probe the ball. Right now, here's an excellent and creative drill you can do to massively increase your ability to probe the ball. Start off short in the court, feed yourself high short balls with a wide split, setting up, loading up. Ugh. Here are the key, you wanna take more steps than necessary. Wide low split, get in position. Ugh. From here, you can progress, feed your balls going forward at an angle. Wide split, moving through the ball. Ugh. Recover back, big wide split, inside out. Ugh. From here, grab a coach or a friend or your doubles partner. Feed them balls moving forward. Now here's the key. I'm gonna call out a random number of bounces. It's how many times you're gonna have to let it bounce. One. Nice, so really focus on getting your body through this ball here when you're working it. Ready? Two. 
Right there, he's gonna have to probe it. Beautiful, ready? Here we go, last one, wide split, one. Get the ball quick, awesome. Now, if you're really looking to maximize your time on the court, and you're a little bit more of an advanced player, this final variation, feed the ball with a slice feel shot, wide split, get in position, <clears throat> drive it. That's not only gonna allow you to develop better feel, but it's also gonna give you a much harder shot that spins off to the side, thus increasing the level of difficulty and making it when you get those real balls, a piece of cake. Good luck. Now that you've properly aligned yourself to the oncoming ball and loaded into a semi-open stance, stretch your off arm across your body with your shoulders rotated more than your hips. If you feel like you just aren't generating enough power or that you're tensing your arm and overhitting the ball at contact, you're likely not prepping correctly and thus failing to utilize your core muscles. If you prepare your racket too late, you're gonna be forced to jerk your racket back and forth prior to contact. This is gonna create massive tension in your arm and thus consequently disrupt your ability to generate a fluid kinetic chain. A simple checkpoint we use with our VIP students is to get your belly button facing the side fence and have the knuckles on your non-dominant arm in view with the racket set at five to 5.30. Here being 12, three, six, so five to 5.30. Again, you need to achieve this configuration in a fluid manner, keeping your hitting arm relaxed and not tensing up. This is paramount to generating that effortless pop setting up and then pulling forward. Like I said before, if you tense your arm too much at contact, ah, bad results are gonna come. On the dip drive, you're gonna be making contact higher and closer to the net, crushing the ball down into the court, just like that. In general, a good rule of thumb is to prep the racket to the level of the ball, right? If the ball's high, naturally you're gonna wanna adjust and get a higher prep. Conversely, if the ball's low, you're gonna wanna prep lower. Additionally, your hitting arm preparation should be higher the closer you are to the net. And we see this in top players is, from a geometric standpoint, you can safely crush the ball down into the court the closer you are to the net, just going down and forward. Now, uh, uh, you really wanna avoid prepping the arm above your shoulders, and we outline this in our highball video, which we've linked below. If you prep your arm above your shoulders, that's gonna result in lost power as you won't be able to utilize your pec muscles as much in the shot. Now that you've successfully lined up to the ball in a turned and coiled, semi-open loaded stance, you're now gonna explode off into the court. To get more power from the ground for free, you're gonna wanna utilize the elastic force of your tendons and muscle fibers, executing a stretch and shorten cycle, analogous to what NBA players do prior to slam dunking. As you drive up, you will kick your right leg up in the air for balance while pointing your left leg forward in the direction of the ball. Now I wanna note here that you should not deliberately try to kick your back leg up during this phase of the stroke. This leg kick is gonna happen as a natural consequence of your body balancing itself during contact. By kicking your outside leg back, you are unconsciously transferring angular momentum for smooth recovery. This concept is best explained by figure skaters and how they change the distance of their arms from their center of mass while spinning to accelerate their rotation. If your leg is not kicking back, it simply indicates that you aren't generating enough upward and rotational force from your leg drive. As you drive your legs and rotate your body, accelerate your hitting arm by pulling the butt of the racket forward towards contact. From this position, drive your racket and extend through the ball linearly and finishing down in between your hip and your shoulder. One of the most valuable insights that I learned at the Rick Macy Tennis Academy is to use your follow through as a tool and adjustment technique. So if you're getting up to the, the short ball and missing long, you can adjust your follow through to finish more low down in the, the hip, below the shoulder area. And as a consequence, it's gonna drive the ball more down into the court. Another reason you may be missing long is that your racket face is actually too open at contact. Although this isn't a hard and fast rule, you can prevent your high balls from going long 
by closing your racket face more at contact. To achieve this, visualize making contact with your racket head above your hand, as this will naturally close your racket face while also giving you more power in your hitting arm. Now, if you've been missing these short balls in a match and you're starting to get frustrated, tense, maybe you even wanna go across the net and strangle the guy, channel the anger into your feet to give you that fluid, relaxed, effortless whip power instead of an anger, you know, tensing your arm as most players do. According to formerly ranked world number four in singles and world number one in doubles, Gene Mayer, one of the easiest ways to achieve fluid power is to visualize your body and your racket moving through the ball on a straight line. This is because you'll be able to utilize your momentum and kinetic chain more if you flow through contact at a fluid and controlled pace. You've probably been told not to think of this shot as a winner, and that's absolutely true. But why? Understand, the biggest source of errors come from trying to overhit the ball, especially out of frustration. Arthur Ashe said, the ideal attitude is to be physically loose and mentally tight. A fantastic hack you can instantly apply on the court to stay physically loose is to imagine that you're exhaling through a straw at contact. Before I learned the optimal technique, I would always miss this shot, getting so frustrated and angry during matches. Then I realized the reason why I was missing this shot was because I was trying to hit it like, ah, like crazy. So once I realized that, you know, fluid power really comes from having a relaxed arm and being aggressive with your body instead of your arm, it just totally took off for me. When I started making this shot consistently, it was because I was relaxed and started feeling more like, Ugh. 